A Russian-made missile has killed two people in a Polish village very close to Poland's border with Ukraine. This is NATO territory. How will NATO respond? The immediate reaction? US President Joe Biden held an emergency meeting with G7 and NATO allies on the sidelines of the G20 summit in Bali in Indonesia. And while Ukraine claimed that Russia had fired this missile, US President Joe Biden said that preliminary information suggests it is unlikely that the missile was fired from within Russia. On Crux Decode, why NATO may stop short of triggering Article 5 of its founding chapter. Warsaw has summoned Moscow's ambassador to provide immediate, detailed explanations, and Poland has also put its military on a heightened readiness in a potentially major escalation in the war in Ukraine. Remember, Poland, unlike Ukraine, is a NATO member. And NATO's Article 5 states that an armed attack against one or more of these countries in Europe or North America shall be considered an attack against all. However, it's extremely unlikely that NATO's Article 5 will be triggered in the aftermath of the attack in Poland. And here's why. So far, two key players, the United States and Poland, both have appeared reluctant to directly point the finger at Russia. The only direct blame came from Vladimir Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, who squarely accused Russia of a direct missile strike on Poland. But the United States rushed out multiple statements, including the one from Joe Biden, saying that the missile did not appear to have been fired from Russian territory. And in fact, may have been fired by Ukrainians in response to Russia's aerial strikes. Ukraine has been activating its air defenses in response to Russian strikes. What about Poland? It has a lot to gain by turning up the heat on Russia, but even in the immediate aftermath, in the heat of the moment as it were, Poland refrained from calling out Putin. It only said that the missile appears to be Russian-made, refusing to confirm where the missile actually came from. And although Warsaw has summoned the Russian ambassador and requested a NATO meeting under the treaty's Article 4, and Article 4 is very clear, it only and only calls for consultations amongst allies in the face of a security threat. That is, if any one of the members feels that there is a security threat or if its sovereignty has been violated, they are well within their power under Article 4 to call for an emergency meeting. Only that much has happened as of now. What it does, though, is allow for more time to determine what exactly happened and what response needs to be given. So yes, a lot of meetings will happen, but no military action planned just yet. And military action is unlikely because remember, NATO requires unanimity on any decision to trigger Article 5. You already have countries like Hungary and Turkey, which are very close to Russia, and they could very well block a move to trigger Article 5. There's another technical question. Does the Poland hit meet the threshold that's required to trigger Article 5. Even if it was concluded that these missiles crossed the Polish border and were indeed Russian and were indeed launched from Russia and not Ukrainian anti-missile interceptors, that would fall short of an armed attack that is envisaged in Article 5. Like William Albuquerque of the International Institute of Strategic Studies says, deliberate armed attack is a real thing. Two misfired crews of ballistic missiles are not that. There is also no time limit on how long the NATO consultations can take, and the language in the Charter is flexible enough to allow each member to decide how far to go in responding to armed aggression. Adding to the fog of war is the fact that both Russian and Ukrainian forces have used Russian-made ammunition during this conflict. In fact, Ukraine has also deployed Russian-made missiles as part of its air defense system. So what is most likely going to happen? An important principle that is likely to guide the Polish, NATO and American responses is proportionality. The Polish government will consult amongst itself and also with NATO. NATO will conduct internal deliberations as well as consultations with the heads of member nations, including the United States. Through all of this, there could be a search for a response to Russia that does not significantly escalate this war. But it also sends Putin a very strong message that such attacks can only result in a larger response from NATO. However, Article 5 or not, 
This incident will definitely have a bearing on the trajectory of this current war. It is likely that NATO countries will seek to hasten supplies of missile defenses to Ukraine, given that a hundred aerial strikes have happened in Ukraine over the past few hours. It is also likely that there may be a strengthening of air defenses along NATO's eastern borders, including in Poland and in the Baltic states. These states will look to amp up their own air defenses, but most importantly, NATO will have to be seen as sending a signal to Putin that if he were to fire at a NATO member, even if it is by accident, there will be a cost to pay. There might also be some private chiding of Vladimir Zelensky for rushing to point fingers at Russia, even when the evidence uh, suggesting that this was from Russia was rather thin. But most importantly, will world powers use this as an opportunity to try and get both sides to the negotiating table? Or will the distance to the negotiating table, the distance to talks, have been further lengthened as a result of this attack on Poland? Either way, this is going to be a crossroads for this nine-month-long conflict between Russia and Ukraine. And it is likely to get far bloodier and far more 